in the headlines of this hour on VTV News. Thousands of people visit President Ho Chi Minh's mausoleum on the National Day. And Vietnam GDP growth to accelerate during a year end. In our world news, tensions escalate in Gaza and the West Bank. Broadcasting from Hanoi, the capital of Vietnam, VTV News starts right now. Good afternoon, it is 3 p.m. local time and you're tuning in to VTV News. I'm Huyen Chen with the top stories. On the 79th National Day of Vietnam, Party General Secretary and State President Tô Lâm visited the families of the authors of Vietnam's national anthem and national emblem. He expressed deep gratitude to the family of musician Văn Cao, composer of Tiến Quân Ca, the song chosen by President Ho Chi Minh as the national anthem. This anthem symbolizes the birth of the Democratic Republic of Vietnam and has been sung by generations of Vietnamese on special occasions. The top leader also visited the family of artist Bùi Trang Thuoc, who completed the national emblem in 1955 with input from President Ho Chi Minh. He emphasized that the emblem represents the nation's strength and identity. The party, state and people awarded the Ho Chi Minh Prize to both musician Văn Cao and artist Bùi Trang Thuoc in recognition of their monumental contributions to the nation. Seventy-nine years ago, the Democratic Republic of Vietnam was born, marking the beginning of a new era, an era of national independence and socialism. On September 2, 1945, at Badding Square in Hanoi, over 500,000 people from all walks of life gathered, eagerly awaiting this historic moment. President Ho Chi Minh, on behalf of the provisional government, solemnly read the Declaration of Independence, officially announcing the birth of the Democratic Republic of Vietnam. Tens of thousands of people from across the country lined up to visit President Ho Chi Minh's mausoleum on National Day today. This occasion provides an opportunity for Vietnamese citizens to express their gratitude and remembrance for the great leader who dedicated his life to the nation's independence and freedom. Visitors began gathering as early as 5 a.m., forming long lines that included veterans, ethnic people, young children, and even international tourists, all united in a solemn and relevant atmosphere. Despite the large number of visitors, security and order were well maintained. On Sunday alone, over 27,000 people visited the mausoleum. The Mausoleum Management Board, in collaboration with the Hanoi People's Committee, provided free water and bread to visitors. These services are regularly organized during significant anniversaries to ensure the best possible experience for those paying their respects to President Ho Chi Minh. Vietnam's GDP growth surged in the second quarter and remains robust into the third, with a 7% annual growth target in sight. The World Bank reports rising industrial output and manufacturing exports. By mid-August, total imports and exports surpassed 473 billion U.S. dollars, a nearly 17% rise from the previous year. Buoyed by these positive indicators, investment and consumption have emerged as key drivers of this economic growth. The newly inaugurated 500 kV Circuit 3 power transmission line highlights the value of public investment, benefiting the economy both in the short and long term. This will eliminate concerns about power shortages for production and business, while also encouraging domestic and foreign investors to expand their operations. What we see coming forward is that since there was a recovery, um, a very big rebound of exports, um, internationally we expect trade growth to moderate a bit. So therefore, we expect also that Vietnam's exports will moderate a bit. It will continue to grow. 
Exports are also a key driver, with total turnover exceeding 473 billion U.S. dollars by mid-August. This is equivalent to a trade surplus of nearly 15.5 billion U.S. dollars. The industrial and manufacturing sectors are also back on a growth trajectory. The manufacturing and processing sectors are maintaining strong growth and regaining their momentum. In particular, export-oriented industries within manufacturing are also showing solid growth. Exports consumption and inflation control in Vietnam are expected to improve, supported by positive external factors like the potential interest rate cuts by the U.S. Federal Reserve. All these factors will contribute to greater macroeconomic stability. Interest rates globally are starting to go down, with the Fed expected to cut them twice this year. This is a crucial development because it will boost investment and consumption and help with debt repayment for the government, businesses and individuals. Many forecasts suggest that Vietnam's GDP growth could reach around 7% this year. However, to achieve this target is crucial to address bottlenecks in mechanisms, policies and reforms. These changes would create a more open business and investment environment. Now, since the National Day holiday began on August 31st, custom clearance for goods has been in full swing at international border gates in Lakson province. This move aims to expedite the clearance of agricultural products, thus reducing storage time and cost for exporters. There were nearly 1,200 vehicles transporting goods across Lakson border gates on Sunday with nearly 400 of them transporting agricultural products. During the National Day holiday, durian exports have been particularly bustling. Security and order are being maintained at international water gates. In addition, the customs clearance process is simpler and faster. I'm very satisfied. During the holiday, import and export activities have been carried out. Border guards and local officials create favorable policies to facilitate the export of goods. Nearly 2,000 vehicles transporting goods have queued for customs clearance at Huyi International Border Gate since the National Day holiday. Task forces at Lansone's border gates are required to work from 7.20 a.m. to 8 p.m. every day, with some departments operating until almost 10 p.m. We have tightened measures to ensure security and order at Lansone's border gates. In addition, we will coordinate with related departments and agencies to facilitate export activities. During the holiday, to facilitate import and export activities, we've implemented a rotating shift work schedule for employees. This ensures that the customs agency runs round the clock, with all services operating at full capacity. By working overtime, customs officers have worked closely with border guards and local officials to support the customs clearance process and avoid traffic congestion at border gates during the holiday. Now, despite the holiday season, the construction site of the North-South Expressway is buzzing with activity. Workers diligently push to accelerate the project's overall progress. At the Bivod Hamgi section of the North-South Expressway, the contractor is maintaining over 100 vehicles, machinery and equipment, with more than 200 workers focused on the construction. Meanwhile, on the 54-kilometer-long Hamgi Vung Ang Expressway, Contractors are striving to complete the roadbed embankment. Simultaneously, they are executing tasks related to the road surface structure, such as laying crushed stone and asphalt concrete. The North-South Expressway section through Ha Tinh Province is expected to be completed by the end of 2025 and operational by 2026. Vietnam is making waves in a sustainable agriculture. In 2023, the country sold over 10 million forest carbon credits at 5 U.S. dollars per ton. By 2025, that price has surged to 20 U.S. dollars per ton, significantly boosting profits for rice farmers. These advancements not only enhance earnings, but also strengthen the global competitiveness of Vietnamese rice. 
Stay with us as we explore how these changes are shaping at the future of agriculture. Thang Lai Agricultural Service Cooperative is the first cooperative in Dong Thap province to join the 1 million hectare high quality low emission rice cultivation project. Contributing 50 hectares, Dong Thap is also one of five localities selected to pilot this initiative in the Mekong Delta region. Initially, many were hesitant to join, but now they're very satisfied. The guidelines for fertilizers and pesticides have proven to be highly beneficial. It's crucial for building raw material areas and ensuring the effective sale of product. As part of the 1 million hectare high-quality low-emission rice project, the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development has launched seven pilot models across Canto City, Dong Thap, Ginzang, Chaving and Sokchang provinces. Farmers report that this method reduces fertilizer use by 20 to 40 percent and lowers input costs by 10 to 15 percent per hectare, compared to traditional practices. Additionally, once fully implemented, the project could cut carbon emissions by 10 million tons annually and generate around 1 million US dollars per year, making it an attractive option for farmers. With support in terms of capital, medicine and technology, farmers are set to expand from 48 to 500 hectares by 2030. The 12 provinces involved in the project have each developed a plan to implement two models per province, with each district featuring these models as well. Two rice cultivation methods, the one must do and five reductions, notably by abandoning straw burning Farmers can cut emissions by 15% and earn carbon credits if these sustainable practices are applied nationwide across 7.3 to 7.5 million hectares. They could generate 700 million US dollars annually from carbon credits. Coming up next on VTV News. Ho Chi Minh City residents celebrate Vietnam's National Day. and Duck Luck organizes the third Gong Cultural Festival. Welcome back to VTV News. Now across Vietnam, from bustling cities to remote villages and islands, the national flag flies high in celebration of the 79th anniversary of National Day, steering up pride and patriotism among the Vietnamese people. In the cheerful atmosphere of this special occasion, residents of Ho Chi Minh City expressed their patriotism and national pride in various ways. On Monday morning, Nguyễn Ngọc Chin and other residents started hanging the national flag in front of their houses to celebrate National Day. Displaying the flag on this special occasion always provides a unique experience. Looking at the national flag, I feel very proud. Hanging the national flag is a way to pay tribute to fallen soldiers and heroes who sacrificed their lives for the independence and freedom of the nation. These young students are gathering at this historic site where Ho Chi Minh read the Declaration of Independence 79 years ago. I'm very happy as I live in a peaceful country. I'm grateful to be here at this moment. I feel proud to be Vietnamese, a citizen of an independent country. Patriotism and national pride are also being spread by young people through social media. On this special day, everyone has their own way of expressing their patriotism and national pride. 
many people love attending the solemn national flag raising ceremony at Nyazong Wharf, where President Ho Chi Minh began his journey to save the country. Others capture the beauty of the city adorned with national flags and colorful flowers. There are people who love performing folk dances on the streets to pay tribute to Uncle Ho. Meanwhile, some people love wandering the streets, enjoying the cheerful atmosphere. Vietnam's National Day is a day when the entire country unites in pride and joy. Vietnamese people worldwide turn their hearts toward their homeland. Joining in the celebration of this great national holiday is also a moment to remind younger generations to extend gratitude to those who fought for the country's independence and freedom. Listening eagerly to their mother talk about Vietnam's Independence Day, practicing singing the national anthem together. Trang's eldest son and two daughters, who were born and raised in Pakistan, are very excited as they are going to attend the 79th anniversary of Vietnam's National Day at the embassy. September 2nd is an occasion when every Vietnamese person looks towards their homeland. I have told my children a lot about Vietnam. I told them that the peaceful life we have today is due to the great contributions of Uncle Ho, generations of party and state leaders, and soldiers who sacrificed themselves to regain independence and freedom for the Vietnamese people. I'm very happy to attend the embassy event to celebrate Vietnam National Day and to burn incense in memory of Uncle Ho. Through my mother's story, I feel very grateful to the previous generations who protected and built the beautiful Vietnam of today. I will study hard so that I can return to contribute to Vietnam in the future. Meanwhile, Phan Bich Thien, an overseas Vietnamese living in Hungary, is deeply moved by the images of vibrant flags and flowers hanging on every street corner, building and rooftop. Every national day, even though I live far away from the country, I'm always filled with emotions and national pride. When I see the national flag flying everywhere in Vietnam and in Ba Din Square, I just want to fly back to the homeland to join in the national joy of this great holiday. National Day is not only a special time for Vietnamese people, especially those living abroad, to turn their hearts to their sacred homeland, but it's also a day to honor and thank President Ho Chi Minh and previous generations who made immense sacrifices for national peace and independence. Now, in the spirit of National Day, tourist spots across the country are seeing a surge in visitors. Many locations have introduced new services to meet the growing demand for entertainment during this extended holiday. Let's take a closer look. In Ho Chi Minh City, entertainment venues are bustling with visitors. The Saigon Zoo and Botanical Gardens saw about 20,000 guests, with many choosing to visit early in the morning to avoid afternoon rain. Popular spots like Suy Tien and Dam Sen Cultural Park also recorded a considerable number of visitors. On this day, many people from the Mekong Delta visited the Hung King's Temple in Kanta City to burn incense in tribute to the Hung Kings. This tradition honors ancestors and reinforces the cultural value of respecting one's roots. Ha Ting Province has launched several initiatives to boost tourism during the long holiday, including new sightseeing tours and entertainment options like the Huanang Dog Racing and Horse Racing, Ge Sot Vinpo Water Park and Xuân Thành Container Resort. On Monday morning in Lệ Thủy District, Quảng Bình Province, a traditional boat racing and rowing festival was held on the Kinzang River, featuring 24 boats and nearly 1,300 athletes. The festival celebrates Independence Day and showcases domestic and foreign tourists, the region's cultural heritage and tourism potential. The Cultural and Tourism Week theme motto, The Call of Love Season, is being held to celebrate the National Day holiday. This event features a diverse array of cultural and sports activities, art performances, cultural exchanges and exhibitions. 
The week's highlight is the art program Passionate Date Night, which announced the recognition of three national intangible cultural heritage sites, the Rain of Praying Festival of the White Thai people, the decorative art on costumes of the Zhao Tian people, and the Mom Mueng ritual of the Mueng ethnic group. During this holiday season, Mok Cho District is expected to welcome over 112,000 domestic and international visitors to explore and enjoy the festival activities. Now, to celebrate the 79th anniversary of the National Day, Daklak Province is hosting the third Gong Cultural Festival under the theme Echoes of the Great Highlands. The program also commemorates the 120th anniversary of the province's establishment. Featuring about 600 artisans and folk performers, this festival offers a platform for cultural exchange, strengthening unity among 49 ethnic groups. It plays a crucial role in preserving and promoting the country's cultural heritage, especially the Gong cultural space of the Central Highlands. Coming up next in our world news. Tensions escalate in Gaza and the West Bank. And oil extends losses on prospect of higher OPEC plus supply. Now moving on to our world news, fighting between Israeli forces and Palestinian militants has been escalating in the Gaza Strip. At least 11 people were killed on Sunday when an Israeli airstrike uh, struck the Safat school in Gaza City, sheltering uh, displaced people. Meanwhile, a large-scale military operation is underway in the West Bank, home to 3.3 million Palestinians. Gaza health officials said at least 11 Palestinians, including women and girls, were killed in an airstrike on a school sheltering displaced people in Gaza City. The attack struck the Safed school in the Zaytown neighborhood in Gaza City on Sunday. Meanwhile, the Israeli military said the school was targeted because it housed a command and control center. Hamas used the command and control center to plan and execute attacks against Israeli army troops and the state of Israel. Many countries have expressed deep concern over Israel's ongoing operation in the West Bank. According to the Palestinian Health Ministry, more than 660 Palestinians have been killed by Israeli attacks across the West Bank since the onset of the conflict. On Sunday, at least 700,000 people took part in protests across Israel calling for a ceasefire and hostage deal. We are here to protest against the Israeli government uh, that is making wrong decisions. Uh, this country was built on some core values. One of them is strictly that the government of Israel will do everything in its power to bring back hostages and soldiers from captivity wherever they are. I have been here only once or twice before and today I decided to come, I think like most of the people here because we had enough, because uh, we can't sit at home anymore and to hope for the change. Egypt, along with Qatar and the United States, is leading mediation efforts to reach a truce and a hostage prisoner swap deal between Israel and Hamas, with the goal of achieving a permanent ceasefire in Gaza. Oil prices extended losses on Monday morning as investors weighed expectations of a rise in OPEC plus supply starting in October. Brent crude futures fell 0.8 percent to 76.32 U.S. dollars per barrel, while U.S. West Texas intermediate crude slipped 0.7 percent to 73.03 U.S. dollars per barrel. The Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, or OPEC, and their allies, also known as OPEC+, Plus, are set to proceed with a planned oil output hike in October. Eight OPEC Plus members are scheduled to boost output by 180,000 barrels per day in October. Meanwhile, Libya's Arabian Gulf Oil Company has resumed production of up to 120,000 barrels per day to meet domestic needs.
while well, exports remain halted after a standoff between our factions shut most of the country's oil fields. The United Nations Children's Fund, or UNICEF, has issued an emergency tender to procure MPOX vaccines for crisis-hit countries. According to the statement, agreements for up to 12 million doses through 2025 may be made, depending on a manufacturer's production capacity. Under the tender, UNICEF will set up conditional supply agreements with vaccine manufacturers. This will enable the agency to purchase and ship vaccines without delay once financing demand readiness and regulatory requirements are confirmed. Several countries have promised to send vaccines to African countries hit by outbreaks. To date, Africa has recorded more than 5,000 cases of mpox, more than 600 deaths and nearly 23,000 suspected cases. Now, amid a declining birth rate and the resulting labor shortage, Japanese companies are increasingly seeking to hire foreign students studying at universities in Japan. The Ibaraki prefectural government has recently established a group to promote the recruitment of foreign students. Members include Ibaraki University, the University of Tsukuba, and local business groups. This new organization will organize internship programs and company tours within the prefecture. In May, the Kanagawa prefectural government launched a consultation service to support companies hiring foreign students. Following suit, the Osaka government organized a meeting in August for 255 foreign students to connect with local companies. According to Recruit Co., only 36% of companies hiring graduates from the class of 2024 met their initial recruitment targets. This figure was the lowest rate since Recruit began compiling this data with the class of 2012. Now, as usual, let's move on to the weather forecast. That's all the news we have for this hour. To rewatch our program, you can download our mobile app VTV Go or check out our YouTube channel VTV for Go. Thank you for watching and see you next time.